Hey there, welcome back everyone. Today is a very different style of video than what, uh, what we normally have. Um, today, usually I try to have a, a procedure, uh, a dedicated, logical, normal procedure of, of how to do something. This one is more laid back. We're just going to talk about Emacs and some other things. And uh, so if that's not the kind of video you're into, no problem. We're going to have other um, going to have other tutorials coming up soon. Um, I apologize for the, the big white screen, the, the blindingly white screen. This is uh, this is Comfort Max, uh, as I call it. It's it, this is a base Emacs here with uh, very little configuration uh, because uh, basically some of the tutorials I have planned that I wanted to go through. I would say uh, work best, you know, starting from a more a more basic Emacs configuration. Um, I know some some people liked the um, the theme that I had going the, the configuration. Um, I'm I can I'll leave a link to the video on uh, David Wilson's System Crafters about how you do that. It was it's pretty simple, you know. You um, I had the Doom Laser Wave theme installed because uh, I like Synthwave. And the the background, the wallpaper was just the um, the Sentinel Core background. I've still got it here in the recording. You can see it back there uh, from uh, from a video game. So yeah, that's that's all that was, and it was just uh, it's nice how all the colors were coordinated. But um, actually, I was on my my work computer where I have um, just you know a, a much more stripped down Emacs. I didn't go through a lot of um, a lot of difficulty in, in making that one look fancy because it's uh, it's just for day to day work. You know, it's not going to appear in any YouTube videos, certainly. So, um, but I was I was writing in it and just you know enjoying like how how comforting and enjoyable this base Emacs can be. Um, I I I really just en I enjoy Emacs without a lot of eye candy sometimes. You know. Uh, I, I wanted to to try out just for fun mainly, you know, doing the the Doom theme, the Doom mode line, and the uh, the wallpaper and all that stuff, just to you know to go through the process mostly for fun. Uh, I find that I I always whenever whenever my configuration actually gets too busy and there's too much stuff in it, I I really just strip it out and and start over again. I just take over I, t I bring over some of the essential things and just flush everything else so i uh, i basically took some of the basic stuff that i had on my my work configuration and some of the things that over the years i've taken as just the core the core functionalities that uh, i really liked to take that i would take from place to place and that i would save and uh, so that's what we're going to start from uh, in the next series of tutorial videos we'll kind of start from the basic emacs uh and then one of the other things i find that uh maybe as i'm getting older the the eye candy is not as much fun as the the customization right like i would i would enjoy more having some special functions or even some custom functions and macros and things that just get the job done and not spend so much time making emacs look sexy and colorful and, and all that you know and, and that's 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 a general computing thing uh as, as i get older i don't think that's just emacs um like as you some uh, linux users talk about distro hopping and uh one of them said you know stop stop distro hopping because what you're doing is you're you when when you first start like when you come over from mac or or windows uh, you're you're used to sort of going from well, what does you just kind of think? What does this distro look like? Or you look at the screenshots and like, oh, this one looks cool, or that person's that person's uh, distro looks cool. What are they using? And you you see that it really doesn't matter because they're using different window managers. You know, you can if you like the way GNOME looks, you can install it, and you can install it even if you're not on Linux. If you're on BSD or or something else, you can install your favorite. Uh, window managers and desktop managers and all those things. So it really, it really doesn't matter. And when I see, the more customization I see out there, the more I really just enjoy the the base flavor of things, um, and actually just uh, getting work done basically. 
so, uh, so yeah, that's just a, a little rant there. Um, I was thinking about doing a, a video about Git for writers, you know, because I'm, I'm not a programmer. I'm sure most of you can tell that I don't really have a programming background. Um, my, my background is in like, English and writing and, and things like that. Um, some of those softer skills. And I started using plain text because it was just, it was annoying having to always upgrade, you know, whatever program you were using and a file that, you know, you had on one computer wouldn't open on another one because you had different versions of something. It just seemed stupid. So I, I started writing in plain text and that was when I was looking at different text editors and uh, eventually discovered Emacs. And that's a story for another day. But um, so this idea of, in doing this video about Git for writers, for writers and people who are not programmers and who have those those softer skills or people who work in marketing or copywriting or advertising, um, just a video talking about all the ways that Git, a program like Git can be helpful um, in getting some work done and being surprised at how useful it is over the years to me, I, I wanted to do a video about that. But part of that, that um, idea is you'd have to sell them on the idea of using plain text, actually writing documents in plain text. And because Git works best that way, you could still use it. You know, it's it's just working on the, those files, but you would lose a lot of the, the functionality as far as like seeing word diffs and um, having uh, like a very accurate count of insertions and deletions right if, if you're if you have like a um like a, a a document that is a proprietary document that on the back end is just like a big xml file you don't really yeah i'm sure i'm sure you can you can still see a, a diff might still be helpful but if it's all kind of jumbled up and you can't actually read the 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 raw you know the actual raw data that you're looking at it's it's in like some weird proprietary format um, uh, not that XML is proprietary, but if it's if it's like a, a very deeply nested XML file, it's probably going to be hard to read what's what's going on in there. So if you want to use Git, of course you would you you'd get a lot of a lot more value out of it by doing your writing in plain text. So I'm wondering if anybody would buy that. You know, um, I think for for a lot of writers, you know, there's writers like um, like famously Neil Stevenson who uses Emacs to write his massive novels. You know. And so I think I think for some writers, it's almost like, at least for me, it was like a lifesaver. You know, you it was um, it changed changed the game. But for some people, it's probably just not going to be part of their process, and it might not be something they'd want to adopt. They might already be comfortable in something like Microsoft Word or Scrivener, or one of those programs. Um, and of of all those programs, maybe I'll do a video about this too. Uh, of all those proprietary writing programs. Um, Scrivener is probably, well, it's probably the best. It's the only one I really spent a lot of time uh, using. I never spent much time in Microsoft Word. But uh, Scrivener's outlining capabilities mostly, um, like if you are, say, something that if you're looking for a program that gives you kind of an org mode style control over the outline of your document, uh, Scrivener is probably the, the best, the way you can move things around. Um, and, and switch back seamlessly between it, like an outlining mode and a drafting mode, kind of like you do in org mode. It, they're not the same at all, but that concept of, of switch, quickly switching back and forth from drafting to outlining and having a, an intuitive outline system as well. Um, Scrivener's probably the best at that. But um, yeah, I'd still recommend org mode. And... Um, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about productivity. A lot of my videos are about productivity. Um, and by that, I, I didn't want that to sound uh, pretentious because uh, productivity, to me, that's starting to sound like a bit of a, a buzzword. So I wanted to be clear that what I mean is just reducing friction. Like that's that's all I'm really talking about when I talk about productivity. Whether it, when you have something in org mode where if you use like the capture system, so that when you're writing, like, oh, you know, that's a good idea. And you can quickly just hit a hot key or a combination of keys and you have a, a template and you can ca quickly capture an idea to get it off your mind so you can keep working. Um, like stuff like that, that just reduces friction in your in your working life. Little tweaks like that, um, having your org agenda set up, having template files 
for for org mode or for other documents that you that you write in. It's all about just reducing friction. So um, that's what I mean by productivity, not um, you know, like being sort of a, a productivity machine, right? You know, everybody has trouble procrastinating, and um, you know, some days you you just feel lazy, all right? So uh, productivity uh, should not be like the the number one the number one goal, or or just getting kind of like busy work done, uh, you know, even if you take the long way. Like some people, you know. It's okay. I mean, some people at their jobs, they they just need to like check a box and and, and you know get things done sometimes. So um, you know, if you get a lot of busy work done, but you didn't really uh, improve on some important area, uh, or you didn't even do anything that sped up the process, so you didn't have to spend as much time on on that particular task later. Um, you know, are you really getting that much done? So seeing it as as reducing friction, uh, I think helps to better describe what I mean. And um, yes, yeah, so as I said, going to be um, starting more from from the basics. I have a on my on my git server, uh, git.chrismyron.com. I've got uh, strats.git right here that stands for strategic resource files. Isn't that cool? Uh, so if you click on that, and you click tree, these are the these are the starter files. This is where where we're, we're starting. I've, I've never been into this idea, you know, like, oh, here's my, here's my awesome configuration file, because um, a lot of this stuff is just, you know, stuff that I got from other people over the years that I, I didn't, I didn't know about, and I just put it in. So it's not like this is, um, you know, this is something that, that I crafted myself that I'm so proud of that I just have to share it with everyone. But um, this is going to be like the location uh, for the some of the tutorials and other videos I have planned, they're going to start, we're going to start from this base configuration and, uh, you know, anything we build on it from here, uh, it'll be either in that config file or this, um, or the custom file here. And um, if you didn't know, you can, you can set a custom config file. So when I got it right there, oh, that's just, that's loading it. Um, and that's actually setting it right there, the custom file variable there. That's been a that's been a really good a good help over the years. And I, I found that from uh, someone at work taught me that. So yeah, it's it's good to share your your config file if if there's something in there that someone can find valuable. But um, certainly nothing fancy in there that I'm uh, I want to show off. But um, just making that making that available here on on the Git server. Also, if, if you want to, if people want to let me know, if you want to leave a comment or whatever, if you want to see how to set up this, um, this is a Git web. This is, um, I just have a, a server out there and I, I um, installed this, this Git web thing, which just gives you sort of a, a visual front end for your, your Git repos. Uh, I like this because you can kind of just click on things and you got, you got your, <coughs> oh, pardon, got your, got your heads down here. We've got the, we've got the, only we have one branch now. We've just got master, but you know, uh, you, this is a nice way to to visualize your your Git project, and um, particularly, I guess, if you're if you're like sharing things with others, um, you can't. I don't think you can clone these. You would need you would need SSH access to my server, which you're you're not going to get, of course. <laughs> but if you click, uh, um, let's see here. There's a button where you can you can here snapshot yeah so you can you can get a snapshot if you click this it'll just download a tar file basically and uh, so you can you can get a snapshot of this this like this commit or if there was other commits you could actually just get a snapshot of an individual commit which is cool or you just get the you know the newest one but that's about it <coughs> oh sorry talking just talking about Emacs here. So excited! I'm coughing. Uh, so yeah, that that was a that was a different video. But um, if you like talking Emacs, you came to the right place. But anyway, so we'll we'll close it out there. Thanks everyone. Let me know if you want to see the the Git server video. That might be a two part because it's kind of long, right? Like you have to set up the Git server and then installing Git Web. I think Git Web 
Yeah, yeah, that's like a separate installation, and you also need to configure the, the web server with Nginx or Apache or whatever you're using. So um, I have an Nginx configuration for Git Web, but that I found um, that I found somewhere. But I don't, I don't have an Apache one. Maybe we can figure that out. But um, you know, Nginx would be fine. But uh, but yeah, so that might be two different videos. But if anyone's interested in that, let me know, and uh, and we'll make it happen. All right. See you, everyone.